Hey there, it's Tank Girl, and this here is the HTC One Mini 2. I know it's a handful, the name isn't really the best, but what this really is is the replacement for last year's HTC One Mini. And just like last year's M7 HTC One was replaced with this year's M8 HTC One, it's an improvement all around. As you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the HTC One Mini last year. I thought it was okay, but it just seemed too much of a redux of a flagship uh, to really be called an HTC One in my opinion. This, however, fixes that. So that's the good news. They've really uh, gone uh, crazy with it. Let me walk you through it real quick, spec-wise and all that other stuff. The big news is that instead of a 4.3 inch 720p display, it's a 4.5 inch 720p display, but it has not lost the really nice narrow width. So it feels really good in hand, and this is amazing. It actually feels better in hand than the HTC One M8, in my opinion, than most phones today. This is up there with the Moto X in terms of the feel in hand and because of the width. So you've gained a bit of screen size but not at the expense of the width. So it's a less bezel because of that. But it is taller and in fact it's pretty much exactly as tall as the uh, Nexus 5. So you'll see that in a second when I do comparisons. But um, in a nutshell you have essentially kept that compactness uh, that we really liked about the uh, HTC One Mini last year. Uh, you still have the boom sound speakers, as you can see. Uh, they sound even better this year, just like with the M8. They've really pushed the envelope. Sensors up here, uh, one of the boom sound speakers. The camera is 5 megapixels in front, just like the HTC M8. So that's a huge improvement. Um, the second speaker down here, and as you can see, uh, you have the same kind of awkward band here between the bottom speaker and the display that the HTC One M8 has. If you watch my review, I went on about this. I, it seems like a wasted space, and that's kind of contributes to that height issue, uh, increased height. Um, capacitive buttons are gone, so now you have on-screen buttons, just like the M8. And to me, I like the on-screen buttons, but I really wish this, this area was gone with the logo here. On the back, you have the same really awesome high-quality kind of gunmetal color. There's a silver as well. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a gold of the HTC One Mini 2 actually, uh, but basically it's the same color schemes as the M8. Uh, notice that uh, you still have the uh, the plastic uh, moldings here on the bottom and top, but unlike the HTC One M8 this year and last year's M7 and the last year's HTC One Mini, they're not seamlessly machined into the metal so that you can feel them. Uh, and I guess that's cost saving for you. It still feels really great in hand, but you don't have that seamless feel. Like if you run your finger here, you can really feel the edges. Uh, HTC logo. So let's talk about the camera because that's a big deal. Notice, of course, no dual camera here, but this is really awesome. Instead of a 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera, it's featuring a 13 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. And it's actually a pretty damn good camera. Now, on the edges here, you can see it's the same kind of design as last year's HTC One Mini, where the metal doesn't go all the way to the edge of the screen. There's a bit of a plastic band all the way along here. Uh, you can see it here, and it continues, and it continues all the way along. So very similar to last year's HTC One Mini, but no complete uh, metal going all around the edges with no none of that really nice beveled aluminum look but again cost saving so uh, walking you through the edges here you have uh, on top a power lock key and a headphone jack no IR blaster notice though that this is the same layout as the HTC One Mini same layout as the HTC One M7 last year the M8 this year has the headphone jack on the bottom speaking of the bottom we have the uh, micro USB and MHL port here in the bottom plastic part. Um, the SIM card slot, nano SIM this year, here on the left hand side with nothing else. And on the right hand side, big news, big change. Just like the M8, you have a micro SD card slot that uh, looks like a SIM slot. And this is big news, you can expand the storage of this device. Uh, here is the volume rocker. I believe this is a 16 gigabyte device in terms of what's available built in. And so that basically walks you through the entire device. So uh, obviously the big news is the bigger screen with the same width phone. 
The 5 megapixel and 13 megapixel cameras are big upgrades. The micro SD card slot's a big upgrade. What about the guts? Well, this is now using a Snapdragon 400 like last year, but instead of the dual core crate, this is using a quad core A7. This is the same processor you'll find in the Moto G. And as such, I'll tell you, it's a screamer. You really never feel like you're running something lower end. Last year's 400 dual core crate in the HTC One Mini just felt sluggish and this does not. Just like the Moto G, it just runs and runs and runs. This has the same level of performance as like a Nexus 4. It's not quite as snappy as the Snapdragon 800 or 801 that you find in the Nexus 5 or in the M8, but it's damn fast. And the only times you see it a little bit slow is uh, picture capture is a, is a, there's a little bit of a delay sometimes, but other than that, really, this is a huge improvement. Another thing you don't see here, but the HTC One Mini last year did not have, and this does have, is NFC. So not a huge deal, nobody really cares, but when you're trying to pair this with your Beats pill, for example, I have a Beats pill that I love, you run into this problem and having NFC is a really nice addition. In fact, it should never have been missing from the HTC One Mini last year. So, one last thing about the hardware, the battery life on this thing is unbelievable. Uh, just like the HTC M8, I'm almost able to go two days with this device. It's incredible. I, last time I charged this was two days ago and you can still see battery life is just ticking along just happily as pie and this to me is a huge deal. It really makes a big difference. Um, it's a 2110 milliamp battery versus uh, 1800 last year. So again, HD keeps pushing the envelope and really improving performance and battery life on these devices. Um, I really, really like this phone. Now, the software is HTC Sense 6 or the 6 Sense, so basically the same as on the M8. Um, really, there's no difference. It just feels as fast. It's just as nice. The, uh, the screen is a little bit lesser quality than the M8. It's a Super LCD 2 instead of 3, and of course, it's not 1080p. But really, there's no complaints to be had. Um, my only concern here is, and this is a software issue, is sometimes the auto brightness is a bit wonky. It's a little too dark especially at night for me in auto brightness. I kind of have to toggle it on and off to kind of get it to re-acclimatize itself. But really, again, I have no complaints. I, in fact, I've almost liked this phone better than the HTC One M8. So let's talk about the camera. Um, this is a 13 megapixel camera uh, and it's autofocus. It has a four by three native aspect ratio instead of the 69. It is really quite good, f over 2.2 in terms of optics. Let me bring up my trusted uh, Nexus 5 here as a model. Uh, I don't want to show you really the features. They're pretty much what you'd expect from an HTC uh, Sense 6 phone. They, everything's there. You're lacking the Zoe mode, but uh, the Zoe app is still there. So uh, let me just show you some of the pictures I've taken because they're just really awesome. Um, and And there are some really quite impressive shots like this one here um, that I'm really, really happy with. And what really blows my mind the most is the resolution really adds to the, uh, to the experience. This is a night shot, low light performance is really quite good. There is no optical image stabilization, let's just point that out. This is Chinatown in New York City. Uh, I was there earlier this week. And so this shot is kind of boring and ugly. I took it out of the window of the uh, Uber that was taking me into Manhattan. But this is where I took it specifically to prove a point. Uh, ultra pixels are awesome. I love the fact that on the M8 and M7 you can gather so much low light because of these large pixels. But that 4 megapixel resolution is really a problem. And let me show you how and why. Look at this. I am zooming in on the Manhattan skyline right here. I actually Instagrammed this shot. Um, this is roughly the shot that I Instagrammed right here. Um, and it's just to show you how this far away I still have enough resolution to get a really good shot to use on something like Instagram. And this is to show you how far I'm zooming out here, okay? This is what 13 megapixel buys you. And I'm not a megapixel war junkie. I'm not about the number of pixels. I just want to point out how much it matters to have that extra resolution. So here are some more shots. Here's a really fantastic shot from the Maker Faire. Um, and another really gorgeous, the exposure here is phenomenal, the dynamic range. So this is a good camera, here's a great macro shot. Um, 
some cool cars, night shot of San Francisco. I'm really particularly happy with this shot in terms of exposure. I was focusing and um, exposing on the wheel of this steam engine at the Maker Faire, and you can see the amount of detail in the steam here is just incredibly good. So here's, you know, here's the beef. This is 13 megapixel f over 2.2. The M8 is 4 megapixel f over 2.0. Yes, the M8 gathers more light. Yes, those pixels are larger. Um, but really, do you gain that much? I mean, I've taken some incredible low light shots here and the extra resolution just pays off. Every time there's more detail, I can zoom in more. It really makes sense to me. If this had OIS, this would be a better camera, I think, than the M8 with the dual camera. So, so again, I think that this is a significant. Here's a low light shot. You can see the level of detail is phenomenal. There's really good quality exposure here. So. Again, you know, you, you can see these pictures uh, on my blog post that accompany this video and, and I, I urge you to take a look and judge for yourself compared to the M8 shots that I've um, also put out there um, and, and, uh, and have a look. You don't necessarily need the larger pixel. What you really need is OIS, which they don't have on either of this or the M8. So that's my takeaway on the camera. Uh, it's a lot to say. The 5 megapixel front shooter is really good as well. Um, but you'd expect that. So let's do some comparisons, right? Because I talked a lot about other phones. I brought the Nexus 5 out a second ago and it's significant because look at this. This is the height comparison. I was telling you, actually, you know, I said, I said they're almost exactly the same height and this is true. So height-wise, you're not really gaining too much with this mini uh, 2 uh, device, but width-wise, you, you, you notice it immediately. Look, look at that, right? Let me just uh, flip them over real quick so you can have a look. And then if I, you know, pile one up over the other here, you can see the width, how much wider the uh, Nexus 5 really is. It's quite significant. Thickness-wise, well, you know, the uh, HTC One Mini 2, what a name, is pretty thin and so is the Nexus 5. And the thickness has really become irrelevant these days, I think. Uh, very few phones are too thick. So let's bring up, of course, the sibling, um, the HTC One M8, the flagship from HTC. Much bigger phone, much wider, much taller, and really it feels night and day the difference. I mean, they're both kind of slippery, they both have very similar material and build. Build quality is phenomenal on both of these, but this is so much easier to hold and to, to, to use, um, in my opinion. And, and you know, I'm a big fan of the five inch screen. I love my Nexus 5. But really, this um, this is 4.5. If this was 4.7 and slightly less bezel and, and gotten rid of this uh, HTC logo bar down here, this would be almost the perfect size for me. Uh, let's flip them over so you can have a look at the similarity in design. Very similar. The only change here is the dual camera. And again, this completely seamless plastic um, machined in, whereas here it's sticking out. You can really feel it. Uh, Thickness-wise, you're looking at um, pretty much the same thickness for these two phones. There really is not a huge difference. And here you can really see how the metal wraps all the way to the glass with that kind of beveled, machine aluminum bevel, which you don't get. You get this kind of plastic rim going all the way around here. Um, and so uh, another comparison, obviously, is the old HTC One Mini, last year's model. Here it is, and you can see the height difference, right? Look at that, I'm lined up at the bottom. So this is kind of interesting to me, is that this is a phone that last year was kind of meh, but this year is really quite compelling. Uh, looking at them from the back, remember this is the kind of aluminum finish where this is like the gun metal. They make this one as well available, and you can see the um, here the, the, the machined in plastic, you can feel that difference. Uh, Thickness-wise, uh, let's have a look here. The they're about the same, really. Not a huge difference. So the Moto X is a darling of a lot of people. I'm personally not a big fan of this phone. Um, it feels fantastic in hand, but so does the HTC One Mini 2. Um, it has a 4.5-inch display with 720p. I think the camera is better on the HTC One Mini 2 than the Moto X for sure. Um, the Moto X isn't as tall, but it's about the same width. Uh, it's also thicker, so, you know, I don't know. I've never really been a, a huge fan of this phone. I think it's too expensive for what it is. It's not that fast. 
It has some cool features, but uh, I think if you had to compare these two, I would buy the HTC uh, One Mini 2 here. So here they are if you compare them in terms of uh, uh, back, and then if I put them I put them together, like this is where the thickness difference is unreal. I mean, look at how much thicker the Moto X is, and you're going to say, well, it feels great in hand because of it, but but so does the HTC One Mini 2, and, and it's it's thinner. So... So my takeaway is this is a fantastic phone. You, you know, in terms of a kind of a compact flagship, I think HTC nailed it this year. I still would love to see this with a Snapdragon 800 uh, with a YS, and I'd be a happier camper. Uh, you know, the Z1 Compact from Sony that I, I don't have to show you is still, I think, the best flagship that's been shrunken down. Um, but... This is a solid improvement over last year, and kudos to HTC for, for going there. So, again, HTC One Mini 2 here. Uh, uh, I'm Tank Girl. My blog is tankgirl.com, T-N-K-G-R-L. You'll find me at T-N-K-G-R-L on Twitter. Please like this review if you did, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Cheers.